Acunetics helps thousands of organizations secure their websites and web applications across the globe. Whether you're a one-person team ensuring the security of a few websites or a large organization interested in automating your web vulnerability assessment and management, Acunetics is here to help. All right. Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Frank, and I'm here to talk to you about a OSINT to Compromise, a journey to social engineering. And to give you a little bit more about what happens in social engineering, but this time to bring it all the way to the, from the beginning to the end. We're going to be following what's kind of called the, what's called the uh, Lockheed Martin kill chain. So we're gonna start off with recon, weaponization, delivery, exploitation, installation, command and control, and then exfiltration of the actual data. Uh, however, we're going to be talking about the entire process, both the red team and the blue team in this. So one of the things that we're going to be using is called OSINT tools. One of the very first steps in the test is to do the reconnaissance phase. And I actually love the reconnaissance phase. I uh, like to spend a lot of time with this. And the problem, though, is that I also like to watch reconnaissance uh, videos. And the problem that I see with a lot of these is that they show you how to use the tool, but they don't take it all the way through. Hey, here's your OSINT. Here's what you can grab. Now you have the data to do something with it. I'm actually going to take you through this entire journey. You know, the reason why, sometimes after learning a tool, you ever feel like this, like you just want to jump on top of a giraffe and jump and look at this. So, okay. We're going to be talking about as an end-to-end -end process. We're going to cover the more overall piece. It may seem that I'm going all over the place with this presentation. If you think that, then you are definitely correct. I'm gonna start off with social engineering, but it's not just about testing people, we're also testing the technical controls. This is not a tools presentation, as I'll be talking about process. But this is also not a process presentation, as we'll be talking about the output of the tools and how to use that tools for the input for your next step. A lot of times when we look at the road to penetration testing, it often looks like this, where it's all over the place. Which way can we go? This is actually what makes pen testing very, very difficult. Okay. Before we get started, let's start on the legal portion. Make sure that social engineering is covered in the rules of engagement and in the scope of work. Are you allowed to review the social media people? Keep in mind that I am not an attorney, and more importantly, I am not your attorney. Some things to consider. Does the company own the email addresses and usernames associated with the company? 99% of the time, that's going to be a yes. Does the company have the responsibility for what the employees post? If they are associated with the company and they are saying they are part of the company, are they responsible for what's going out, what, what they're putting out there? What are the terms and the services of the social media site, whether you're talking about Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, any of the social media sites, what are their rules? And one of the things that you'll have to really take into consideration is why did you sing out, single out an employee or single set of employees? This can get into some very deep uh, HR issues if you're not very careful. Right. Uh, well, so I'll cover some, cover some definitions if you don't happen to know. OSINT, open source intelligence, is data collected from publicly available sources and intelligence content. We all know that there's tons and tons of information out on the internet. OSINT is the ability to go out there and grab that information and be able to see, see what's out there publicly. Compromise, uh, violation of a security policy which an unauthorized intentional or unintentional disclosure, modification, destruction, or loss of an object may have occurred. Essentially that you have been, uh, you have an incident, which is the next definition, and someone has gotten into your system. Now, the difference is, at least as what I see is between a compromise and a breach, is that a breach just means that they've actually were able to exfiltrate the data and you've now found the data on some other type of source, sources that are not owned by the company. So the first tool that we're gonna cover is called Maltigo. Maltigo is an open source intelligence and forensics tool developed by Pantera, right? Uh, they focus on transform. They focus on a graphical format. And they like to have a lot of modules inside Meltigo. I'm only going to use one. So I'm going to play a video here of me using it. 
This is called the demo, the company stalker. And in here, this is of course the free edition. This is run off of Kali Linux. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this, right? And of course, I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna log in. Uh, went ahead and skipped past that. Uh, I don't wanna give out my username, right? And what I'm gonna do is that it's now sitting there updating its data. It's going to go ahead and start a blank graph. And then what I'm going to do is up in the top, I'm going to click on uh, the Maltigo symbol. Right. And I'm going to go ahead and choose company stalker. And the company stalker is essentially, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in a company name. Uh, it's going to go out to their public website and it's going to start building a graphical type of interface of the data that it can find. Right. So as I run the tool, the tool is sitting there building this graphics. And since I'm working on the company stalker, it's looking for email addresses, it's very specifically email addresses. And of course that tells me the person that I'm trying to communicate with or the person that I'm going to target. When I take the data, I'm going to go ahead and pull the data out of the email addresses. Um, in this case, you can see the, the format, right? Could this be the way that the usernames are formed? Now, this is not the way that you'll actually see the data in order to protect everyone involved with this presentation. I've shortened the last name to three letters. And obviously it's not the company, it's not the company, right? Uh, in this, what we're going to do is we're going to put take the data from this and put it into the number one favorite tool, the penetration testers, Microsoft Excel. Okay. We've taken that data, we've put it into Microsoft Excel. Now we're going to also take one of the names that are off that list, and we're going to check all the social media sites with it. Uh, Sherlock is an open source OSINT tool that takes a username and checks for, checks for other social media sites, right? Uh, the tool is found over on the GitHub site. And if you want to learn, I'm going to show you the tool, but if you want to learn more about the tool, uh, there's a gentleman named Nullbyte out on YouTube, and he actually has done some great work on how to use this tool. So this is a demo of Sherlock right off of Kali Linux. So I'm going to go ahead and run the tool. And in the tool, what it's actually doing is now looking through all these social media sites, trying to find that name. Everything from Facebook, from eBay, anything along that same name so that we can try to build a great profile for this person. It's gonna pause a little bit. Facebook takes a little bit for it to go through. All right. It's now gonna sit there and it's gonna look through all these different social media sites. So on the results of, of Sherlock, uh, we can see that we have a lot of data. Now, one of the things that I did was I went through and I saw a lot of the investing sites. And if you go to the person's web to Facebook page here, you can actually see that they live off out of the country and they're involved a lot with money. If you were to scroll down on this Facebook site, they were involved with a ton of money, right? So what kind of stuff are they going to be susceptible to for a compromise attack? We're gonna go ahead and spearfish this guy. So the graphic that I have here, you can see is what is the anatomy of a spearfishing attack? You know, we're gonna target social networks and target a company. We're gonna follow the social trail. Uh, we're gonna use a email address, right? Emails pass through the spam, spam filter, hopefully, right? Open by the sender, a link is clicked, and then the hacker uses a backdoor to test the information. So let's put that into practical use now. Right? How do we build a good fish? You know, what kind of fish do we want to send to this person? From the social media that we did, we can tell that this person's a VP, right? Um, he's probably not going to take a directive style of phishing. He's not going to sit there and go, hey, go do this. 
is going to be all about information that he can use and consume, right? So maybe a statement. But how do we build a convincing one? How do we learn about what kind of data would this person want to be attacked with? Right? Well, we use Google directives, or as I like to call them, Google dorking, right? Everyone knows Google. Uh, we're going to use uh, Google directives to find a PDF from a legitimate site. So what we're going to do is we know that this person, you know, the original target was Schwab.com. So we're going to go into Google. We're going to type in site colon Schwab.com and then file type colon PDF. And what this will do is find all the PDFs that are off of Schwab.com. We can then sit there and look at what kind of files are coming from Schwab.com PDFs. And that way we can make a, a better, more convincing fish. Right? So when I go ahead and do this, I went ahead and did the site colon. I downloaded the PDF as well use it as part of the next step. Okay. And if you ever need a little bit more information on Google dorking, it's googleguide.com advanced operators reference.html. Okay. We're now going to move on. So we now have the PDF. We have the profile of the user. Now we're going to use a social engineering toolkit by TrustedSec. Uh, it's written by Dave T Kennedy, the founder of TrustedSec. And it's going to be a Python driven tool aimed at penetration testing. Okay. When we do social engineering, right, or proper social engineering, we'll need a couple of different architectures here. So if you can look at the graphic, uh, we have our mail server. We're going to try to deliver the mail through the corporate mail server over to the user. And then the user is going to sit there and hopefully click on the link. And then it's going to try to run a script that will now egress out to a different type of host. Um, I would suggest putting this into someplace public like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. Be sure to test and read their terms of service to make sure that you are not violating any terms of their service. Okay, so uh, in order to build this, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to use the uh, social engineering toolkit. So I start with MFS console. Okay. And as I start the console here, I got now Metasploit. Right? And I'm going to write in there use exploit Windows file format Adobe PDF. As I sit there, I run it, right? It's gonna now sit there and configure it. I'm gonna now type show options. And now in the file name, of course, you're gonna see here is that this is my L host, my listening host. Uh, that's where we actually wanna move that over to the cloud. So we wanna create the listening host. We're gonna change the IP address to a cloud server or, or a server that we have out in the cloud. I'm now gonna hit run and it's now created the evil.pdf, right? I would suggest uh, when we actually go to the delivery of this portion that you change it from evil PDF. I'm gonna assume that most users uh, are go not going to train and use and click on something called evil, right? Now, how do we deliver this? We can now send this via email, right? With the work you've done, you know how to build a good ruse. Right? We know what this person is looking for. They're looking for financial data. They were a vice president, so they're not going to take a directive, but they may take things like a statement. You may not want to send it. If you do send it, you may not want to send it over a Gmail account. Uh, Gmail has this horrible thing of stripping out malware and makes it harder for pen testers. Uh, obviously, in the pandemic that we're in, you may not have physical access, but if you do, there's always USB drops. Or if you happen to be in the same vicinity of the person, have a USB, and then sit there and ask them to print something. Can you print this? Can you open up this PDF for me? Which will then initiate the malware and send it out, right? 
And then of course, you can also send some of this data through social media platforms. Okay. Where do we measure success now, right? I mean, a lot of times when you look at the red teams, you sit there and you go, oh, well, he never hit the listening point. So we weren't very successful. Possibly, right? Um, you know, if it is, if you did hit the listening port, you know, from a red team perspective, you know, do you have to grab the C2 from the user's laptop? Did the C2 actually work, right? Uh, make sure that when, you know, a user takes email, what did they check the email on? Did they check it from their laptop? Did they check it from their phone? Did they check it from their tablet? How many devices have, uh, do you have to just check your email? You know, but this is not just a red team presentation. This is also a blue team presentation. So if you did get anything on listening for it, what stopped you, right? Was it the user? Did the user actually report this phishing email to whatever process that you have? Did the email catch the attachment? Did the user not even get the attachment, right? If the user did click on the link, did your endpoint protection was in place and did it respond? Did it stop it? If your endpoint protection didn't stop it, did the DLP stop the egress? All right. Hopefully that was helpful for you. My name is Frank. Um, in previous experience, I've managed network and penetration teams. I've also managed security architecture, engineering, and vulnerability management teams. Uh, I've created classes for the state of Colorado. And I'm currently a content engineer for HackerU. Uh, HackerU does provide the back end content and instruction for a lot of universities out there. Personally, I hold three SAN certificates. I live and work in Denver. I'm involved with the Denver OS chapter. And if you need to contact me uh, on Twitter, I'm at Professor Frank 256. Thank you for your time, and I appreciate it.